We're live. Hi, everybody. Is anybody there? Eight people. Oh, welcome to month 11 of our quilt sampler. Um, so just two more blocks to do. So um, this month we are making this block right here. The original block when we were do throwing them into the um, uh, quilt, these were all done with half square triangles. And yes, you can um, still do it that way. However, I thought it'd be nice to delete this seam through our um, background color and make flying geese. When you look at them, they are not just uh, traditional flying geese. We'll get into that a little more later. So we got our cutting instructions and I just added a little uh, something to our cutting instructions. So uh, the point on the right, I put a number one. The point on the left is number two. So you can see down here, color one, color two, we're going to get into that more. I think we're going to do our half square triangles first just to warm up. One other thing we are cutting. This time we have to cut a little bit exact. We want four and an eighth for our flying goose and four inch for our half square triangles. So I labeled them on my uh, uh, little design board here so I don't get them mixed up. Our eye cannot tell the difference between a four inch and a four and an eighth. Inch, so I wanted to make sure I label them. So that being said, we're going to take our four inch ones and we are going to make half square triangles. I took all my orange ones because they're on the corners and they're also going to be in the center and I do a line from corner to corner. And we are just going to sew the same way as we have all along. We're going to make our half square triangles. So we are going to take these right sides together and we are going to sew on either side of the line. Now, because I still have my diagonal seam tape on here from last, um, last month, it just stays there until it gets all ratty and then I take it off. Last I, week. Last week? Last week. Sorry, last <laughs> week. Um, I actually didn't have to draw the line on my block. Once I get it joined up here on this side, I just take my point and I line it up with the black line. So it's the quarter inch line that's on the right. And I am not going to look at my needle. I'm going to look at this point and it's going to follow up that black line. So at this point, I could either grab another unit and slip it in or I can turn them whichever your sewing machine likes to do, I can sew on the other side. This sewing machine works fine like that, but my sewing machine at home, if I do it, that first stitch really pulls my uh, threads in and it just gathers my whole corner. So I like to sew them all in one side and then all in the other. So we're just going to zip through this. Uh, where's everybody from today? I'm hoping our quality is pretty good. The weather here is not too bad. It rained this morning, but it's clear. So I'm hoping our internet is good today. Arthur, is that in Southern Ontario? I think so. Says, Comrades and Adventures says hello from Batchelona Bay. Ooh, cool. Has anybody been running into any quilting problems as they're going that they need um, have any questions? Guelph. Awesome. So because we're just making half... Lacey says hello from Louisiana. Oh, hi, Lacey. I'm glad you could join us. 
bet your weather's a little warmer there than here. And because we've made lots of half square triangles, I don't have to really talk a lot on this one. However, it's pretty cool. We did get in some new scissors. Uh, Faf now has a wonderful line of scissors out. Um, do you want to grab the big ones and whatever a couple packages are? So we haven't opened them all up yet, but they look pretty cool. The price seems very reasonable, which is always a good thing. Things are getting so much more expensive. We try to keep everything down as far as we can. Um, hopefully we do the best that we can. We have these ones in stock. The other ones are already sold out. Okay. So you, they're a wonderful, shiny black um, uh, metal to them. Um, double curved embroidery and the um, duckbill scissors, really great for applique and for this one for embroidering in the hoop. It has a really uh, big double curve on it. Um, I haven't used these ones. They're a bent trimmer. So you can see that they're flat on the bottom. So it's a little bit easier on your uh, fabric. So if you're cutting out patterns, etc., your blade is flat on the table. So you're not lifting your fabric and it's not adjusting, and, you know, wiggling and getting all out. And I have a wonderful little um, uh, trimmer that I'm sold out of. I'll have to show you that next time. But it has a little curved blade on it that... Um, um, it's nice for snipping our threads. Great for when we're doing quilting too. So with this, I just want to press them away from the background fabric. So we are calling this white, our background fabric. So whether it's your dark or whether it's your light, um, we want to press away from that. So we're pressing out towards the orange. What else has been new in the store? I don't know if there's been anything else new. Some new fabric. You'll have to come in and check that out and see. We're always on the lookout for new tools. Um, I'm waiting excitedly for um, a new rotary cutter that's coming in that's supposed to be a little heavier. So it's supposed to be easier on the wrist. Um, it's going to do the pushing, the cutting instead of us having to do it. So they're finally in stock and I'm waiting for my order of those to see how they are because we always got to try the new cools, right? New cool tools. We have uh, Sandy from Aloha, Oregon joined us. Oh, hello. Or I should say Aloha. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still a little bit uh, surprised, pleasantly surprised on how many people are tuning in from all over. Um, like I've said before, I've always considered myself just a little Northern Ontario town. So it's pretty cool that, you know, um, with the internet that we're able to go far and between, it's just, it's just pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So there's rumors that fiber optics internet is actually coming to our little Northern Ontario town late this summer. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed for that, just in case we do something in the fall again. Which might be kind of fun. Hello from Toledo, Ohio. Wow, hello. You can notice here, here's a little tip. I have got them set up with the orange, one pile of the orange on the bottom, one at the top. So when I'm cutting with my block lock ruler and it butts up against my seam, again, I've made sure that there's cutting, uh, cutting fabric all the way around. I'm gonna cut these two corners. 
I'm going to rotate my whole block, slide it down, line up my solid lines for three and a half on the edge of my block, cut, cut. So now this one here that's in this shape, I end up putting on top. I know I can take this one. My ruler's automatically in the right direction. I don't have to think about having to flip it because my seam doesn't line up with my corner. And if you don't know what I mean, if I had my ruler in the wrong direction and it butts on my seam, you can see my seam does not go to the corner of my ruler. Rotate it around and flip. Um, one thing I never mentioned to everybody too, and I'm sure that you've already realized it, but the people that are doing the queen size quilt, you need 25 blocks. So you will have two of each of the blocks that we're doing of the 12 blocks. And then you have to choose one of your very own, either one of ours that you like the best or go on the internet and find another block or one of your favorites to put in there for your 25th block. So you will have to post next week if you find a different block that you want to use for your 25th block. Rotate, slider down, lines on the edge. I always eyeball, and a lot of times if I'm here at home doing things myself, I do say to myself, you know, I double check, make sure there's fabric all the way around. Rotate. Line up my edges. It's almost kind of a meditation, a mantra. I keep having to talk to myself just to keep me organized. This would also be a good block to do a third color way of it. So this one would be. In, yeah. Yeah. If they don't want to find their own. And down. I think block nine would be really nice to do. Which one's the block nine? Uh, that is... This one. Oh, that would be pretty, yeah. That would be nice to do a third block of, yeah. just because it's a very pretty block. Okay, so I have my house score triangles done, and now we're going to continue on with our flying goose. So what's so special about this goose? Um, if we were making geese with the wing clipper or four at a time, I'm just going to get my little sample here. So remember that we sew a block on either corner, cut it down the line, open it up, press, sew the other block on the corners. So if we wanted a flying goose with two different colored wings, that's exactly what we do. Our first sewing would be the one color. The second sewing would be the second color. So when we cut it in half, we will have one goose with the blue on the right, the green on the left, and the other block would be opposite. So the blue is on the left and the green is on the white, right? Which are really great for certain things, but if we were putting two together at an angle, you would see you would have two green points, two blue points, not quite what we wanted with this block. With this block, I want to make sure that the one color one is always on the right and the color two is always on the left. So non-mirror image. And here's how we accomplish that. So, of course, Deb Tucker from Studio 181 has, uh, 180 has come up with a wonderful technique she, she calls geese of a feather. And with this 
technique sheet, you will be making them. So all the one wing on the right is one color, all the one is on the left. I really recommend you getting this technique sheet. We're going to go through it step by step, but it does have the pictures on the back that really keep you organized, making sure you know what corner your pieces go to. So we're going to take our four and an eighth inch blocks and we are going to draw on those. We had to bump up the four and an eighth and it's all because of alignment. And we're gonna go into that a little bit later. This time I like using the magic wand or if I don't have a magic wand, use a, a, a regular ruler with a quarter inch marking on the center. And I am going to draw both of my lines on both sides. Whoops. Here's the one time where you do not want to use um, a friction marker because we're going to be pressing this and a friction marker will come off with the heat. So it sort of defeats the purpose of us drawing the lines. Oh, um, sorry, we do have someone that's asking if we're going to be doing a video on Easter Monday. Um, I believe so, yes. Yes, we will. I just that uh, my kids that are coming home for Easter have to leave Sunday afternoon. So um, I will be here and we will do one on Easter Monday. So on all four of my wing lines, I am line, uh, drawing a line with either a mechanical pencil, you could use an ultra fine Sharpie, or if your corners are really no, that's on your seam. You don't want to use a Sharpie. That's right. Not on this one. <laughs> that's right. Thank you, Tiffany. You're welcome. So either a, um, a mechanical pencil is the best, but if you can't see it, use a white chalk. With this block here, what we want to do is draw two lines from corner to corner. So this is our seven and a half inch block. This is the one for our uh, large triangle. And I do want to draw some lines, some um, registration lines on this as well. Right side up. Right side up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And this one for sure, uh, you can use a Sharpie marker or a mechanical pencil, something that's not going to erase with the heat. And just one down the center. So one on either side down the center. Now with these blocks, what we want to do is cut them from corner to corner down the center. We are going to be working with triangles this time. So we're gonna have a pile of one color. Oops. And we are gonna have a pile of the second color. At this point, what you're going to do is you're going to decide which point you want color one and which point you want color two for your fabric. So I'm going to make sure that my color one is the blue and color two is the pink, just to be easy um, to keep to, to coincide with the pattern that I drew. Um, also color two is going to be a full um, diamond point. Color one is not. So that might be something that you want to think about as well. So I know that my color two is going to match up with the point of my um, half square triangle. Clear? Clear. Okay. So we are going to take our, um, our, our, our large square for our flying goose. And normally what we do is we put the full corner here. This time what we want to do is uh, put one of each color. So our color one, which is our blue, will be on the right. And we bumped up that size um, an eighth of an inch because I want to line up 
the edge of my um, square with the edge of my big square. So remember when we're doing wing clippers, we smoosh that in an eighth of an inch. This time we're not going to be doing that. So what I want to do is I am going to align um, the blue one and my color one and my color two. I'm lining it up with the line that we drew and aligning the edges of my block on the um, background square. Here's a wonderful place for our seam align glue. I am just going to, before I start, grab my ironing board because I want to press these into the right spot. So I am just going to dab these down. Because these are biased, we have to be extra careful. And if I do use the seam align glue, it is just going to hold it in place a little bit easier for us. And then I'm just going to hit that with the iron and it's going to lock that in place and I don't have to worry about pins. Hence the reason why we couldn't use the friction marker. First time we did this, I drew them with the friction marker, did the little pressing and ta-da, all my lines were gone. So my color one is on the left. My color two is on the right. I'm going to rotate it because it's easier for me to work that way. So whatever color is here, the opposite color is going to be there. Again, my color blue or my color one is going to be on the left. Again, lining the edge that's cut on that um, drawn line. The edge of my square on the top, my color two, I'm going to hit that with the iron and we're going to sew. Now because I want to sew on the line, I'm going to switch up my foot. Okay, with my faff, this one's considered an OA foot. It has the slot down the center. It's the one that I like using the best. There's also the doo -doo -doo -doo, 1A foot that has a little red line there. Whichever one works better for your eyes, um, they both work pretty much the same thing. So now I want to sew directly on that drawn line. one side and back up the other. I'm going to cut it again like we normally did when we did the wing clipper with the flying geese. We are just going to cut the two sections apart straight down the center. And now we're going to press our seams towards our little um, triangles. Uh, while you're pressing, we do have a question. Um, could you explain when and when not to use steam? Sure. Um, steam can be our friend, but it can be definitely an enemy. Um, so when I'm pressing seams, I don't like to use steam. When I do use steam is when I'm preparing my fabric. I like as much steam as I can because if there is any shrinkage or I want to heat set um, dyes or whatever, I want to use that steam at that point before I start cutting. Once I start cutting fabrics, doing my piecing, steam can really warp a seam. So that's when I like to use no seam, low, no steam. Um, so when I'm doing my piecing, when I'm sewing my, 
pieces together, no steam. Once my block is totally finished and put together and I want everything to lie really nice and flat, I will then press it with steam because all the edges are basically all um, sewn and they're not going to stretch, that kind of stuff. Another time I might use steam if I'm, say, making a 12 and a half inch block and it's measuring it not quite the half inch, I will take it to my board, I'll spray it with a little start, and I'll turn steam on my iron and just kind of stretch just ever so much. And you end up that you can get like that 16th of an inch or that eighth of an inch sometimes out of just from the seams. Also when using steam a seam. And also when using steam a seam, that's right, yeah. Steam a seam is that fusible web and um, found out that they tell us that if it's gumming up your needle, steam it. Your very last pressing when you're doing the applique, you give it a good steaming with lots of heat and it will set that glue into the fabric and it shouldn't gum up. But that's a totally different topic. Um, okay, so now that I have my little heart shapes, um, you have, a color one and a color two on either sides. So opposing that is the opposite color. So if this one is the color two, I want to put the color one and then the color opposite will be on the opposite side. Make sense? Okay. So let's do our glue. This is one of the places that is so great for the glue um, just because it's going to help keep that bias edge of that triangle from stretching. And, and again, I've lined up my pieces flush with the edge. They're not, they are not smooshed in that eighth of an inch or sixteenth of an inch. So I've got one. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to work on this side. So this one's the purple. I want to put the blue. Line it up again with that line that it was drawn. You can see why I drew the line um, at the first time right at the beginning, because now that it's cut, it would be a little bit more difficult to draw that line from corner to corner. Press that in. And let's do our sewing. Again, sewing straight on that line. Just clip that first one off. Oh. And our last seam on our half squares. Remember everything I tell you too with steam, not steam, whatever. Again, it's all what works for you. Because I know some people that just steam absolutely everything. Um, it's what you get. My idea is to take as many classes as I can and then find out what works best for you. And that's why there's so many different ways to do things out there.
And this is just the way that works best for me. So now that I've cut these apart, you can see that I now have one, two, three, four flying geese with all the color one on one side and the color two on the other. Yay! Let's just press those again. Remembering this seam here is bias. I want to make sure that I don't stretch that. That one's really easy to stretch. It's also easy to fix out again. And that's a place where I would use steam. Is if I have to fix something. When Tiff was doing her block, we had to fix one. I should have saved it so you could uh, see. You never know. Maybe I'll have one here. And I do. I do. They never always turn out perfectly. Sometimes I stretch. I get uh, carried away with my pressing. Okay, so just to review the wing clipper and how it works, uh, when I go to square up, I'm going to have the point of the goose pointing towards myself. And on our paper, it said we are squaring these up to three and a half by six and a half. So there's my three and a half, my six and a half. So right on top of the three and a half, I have this intersecting uh, diagonal. So this constant diagonal goes on the one seam and the other seam lines up here and I did stretch this one you can see it's way off are you able to see that I can I don't know if they so can. there's my there's my seam right here and it's not touching my line whatsoever and if I tried to trim this it wouldn't work so here's what we do I know I sewed perfectly so it's all in when I pressed it so I am going to turn my steam on and I am just going to scratch this with my finger because it's bias. I probably stretched it and I'm just going to use the steam to put it back where I want it to be. Burn my fingers. <laughs> now let's see if that works out. I know you probably can't see very well, but. And there I have it. I am just a thread off and I can live with that. I could always go back and just press it a little bit more. I think I got too much steam on that one. I'm just scratching it over, just pulling this corner over a little bit towards the center. And that steam is going to hold it where it's supposed to be. And sometimes you have to do it two or three times. There, now I'm happy with that. So I have a little bit of fabric all the way around past my three and a half by six and a half and some on the top. My two diagonal lines are lining up perfectly on my seam. So I'm going to support this corner because there's a seam there and it's going to want to, my fabric's going to want to shift underneath. So I'm going to cut the right, cut the left. Again, if you're a left-handed sewer, Deb Tucker, the ruler comes with wonderful instructions for the left-handed people. You don't have to figure out on your own how to do it. So my perfect corner, my upper right, goes down to my lower left. My three and a half and my six and a half inch line align with the edge of my block. And that magic little X right there is going to ensure that I have a quarter inch seam and I'm not going to cut off the tip of my triangle. So there we go. One. Let's see how this one works. Oh, that one's pretty close to right on. I don't have to fix that one. Upper right to lower left, my six and a half, my three and a half inch line. I 
just to say it, it matches the edge of my ruler. So I'm not going to just cut the corner off that's over. I'm still going to cut that whole side because there might be a thread or so that gets in my way. So I never want to just cut what I think needs to be cut. I always want to cut the whole side. And then we'll do the top. So you can see that it cut off just a teeny weeny little bit of thread. But it makes a nice crisp edge easier to sew together to my next block. Okay, so my diagonals. This one's a little stretched as well. Let's just go back to our... And I need a little bit more. Sometimes I'll also press my seam back open. Whoops, folded my corner down. It's fogging up my ruler. <laughs> there we go. This one's still off a thread, but I think at the end of the day, it's really not going to be noticeable. Oops. There we go. Oh, one more. That's not too bad. Two I stretched and two are pretty close to perfect. And upper right to lower left. There we go. So there we have it. We have our four flying geese. So before we, we can either lay out the block now, but before I do, I want to sew together my pinwheel. Now, if you're unsure of which way to, your pinwheel goes together, easy thing to do is lay out your, um, um, your geese. And now I'm going to lay out my pinwheel because I want that color number two to uh, create a full blade of the star. Again, then from here, they're just going to rotate 90 degrees. 45 degrees? 90 degrees. 90 degrees. And that's how we want to sew our pinwheel together. Val, that is the Geese of the Feather Technique Sheet by Studio 180. So I'm just going to ignore my, um, I'm just going to sew my pinwheel together. Again, my seams are going to butt very nicely because we press them all towards color two. I can place a pin in there to hold that nice and straight. And so where's my leader? There we go. Oh, I don't have my quarter inch foot on there. Let's just switch that up. Good point to remember because I've done that before. Started sewing blocks together without putting my quarter inch foot on and then all of a sudden they were too small. I couldn't figure out why. Just double checking, make sure I'm sewing the right side. And off I go. Again, with my diagonal seam tape, 
um, lining it up at the quarter inch here, the edge of my block will follow that black quarter inch all the way up. One and two. I'm just going to, I want to sew this side, but I'm just going to flip it over because the machine likes to do the, uh, just two layers of fabric when we're starting out. So let's just let it work that way. You have to become friends with your sewing machine. You have to learn what it likes sometimes the best and um, accommodate it. It is our best friend, you know. Alrighty. So which way are we pressing this seam? Um, whoops. Okay, we have, um, how do I explain this? Let's see, we have flying geese with our seam in the bottom goes in two different directions. This one has the blue on top and then we have a purple on top. So if I have the purple on top here, I also want the purple on top there. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter at the end of the day, but it's all in the way the direction of the seam allowance goes. So this one just has a little bit more bulk towards our purple. This one has a little bit more bulk towards our purple. So what we're going to do is press these seams away. So we're going to press them towards the orange. Do you know what I mean? Just so they butt together a little bit better. And it doesn't matter which way you do it, one way or the other. It really doesn't matter whatsoever. I just want to be able to start my seams by pressing them away from, um, in the opposite direction of this seam. How's that? They're just going to fit together a little bit better. So I'm going to place these back down on my board to make sure that I still have my pinwheel. And then I have this intersection we have to deal with right there. In a perfect world, all I have to do is butt my seams and so, and it'll be absolutely perfect, but we know we don't live in that room world. So I'm going to take a pin and I'm going to pin it right at the point of the intersection here. And I'm pinning it on the opposite side of our seam. So our seam's going to the right here. I'm pinning on the left side. And then I'm going to pin this one again, right into that point. I am going to wiggle and jiggle and butt that seam, nest that seam really perfectly and align it so my um, pin is totally perpendicular. And hopefully that will keep that center lined up for me. I can pin there. I can also pin on the other side if you want to do two pins. Some people do two, some people do one. I'm going to line up this edge and let's see how good I did. Now I want to grab my purple thing because I know there's going to be a lot of bulk there. I just want to help that along. Before I finish, I'm going to line up this side. This is one of the intersections that sometimes I have to re-sew. Sometimes they work perfectly. Let's see. I want to peek first. No, I'm just kidding. I'm okay with that. They're not too, too bad. So what I want to do with this one again, just to get rid of some of that bulk, is I want to spin my seam. So I'm just going to unsew the previously sewn seam. So it's this seam right here, the one that's vertical. 
I'm just going to unpick those two th or three stitches that are in my seam allowance. Flip it over again, this vertical seam. I want to unpick those two or three stitches. I don't want to cut the end because I don't want to have it unravel. I just want to get those stitches out of the seam allowance. And if you're wondering why Cindy just went quiet, it's because she was looking over her glasses. So she was talking into her chest. There I go. Alrighty. <laughs> so the it's not going to be all the seams because these ones are pressed in the opposite direction. But it is going to give me that little um, pinwheel in the center. So they're not all going in the same direction, but half of them are going in the same direction. But it's going to give us a good um, flat center in our block. Let's give it some pressing. Okay, and there we go. We are also going to take our other half square triangles and we're gonna line those up in our corners. And I am putting my color number three or C towards the outside. So all we have left to do is sew the block together. Same as always, right to left. And now remember we had said that we wanted to press the seam um, out towards the corner. That's because now miracle after miracle, these seams butt together. right to left. Now on this block, I usually like to keep them this way. I'm going to flip so I can see the corner or the point of my flying goose. I want to make sure that that lines up perfectly with my seam on the bottom. So again, I'm going to match right in the point of the goose and a quarter inch down on the seam. If you can't eyeball that, don't hesitate to take our magic wand, put it on the outside and give yourself that quarter inch mark. Pin just on top of that quarter inch mark because that's the width, the thickness of your pencil. Now it lines up perfectly. I can wiggle it back and forth so my pin is nice and straight. My corners are going to line up nice and straight, I hope. And off we go. I'm not a huge pinner, but I would rather pin than unsew. So it's so much nicer to pin match our corners and maybe sew it correctly exactly the first time than try to eyeball it and, oh, let's just sew it together and then they don't line up and then I have to unsew. So pinning definitely takes um, has its place. So I've got a lot of bulk in here. So I want to make sure that I go slowly and I am just going to remove that pin. I'm watching my sewing, so I hit just on top of the X of my previous seams. This needs to be realigned. I see my bottom fabric. There we go. I'm just gonna slap that in there so you can see what I mean by my seam. So I wanted to make sure that my seam here goes nice and straight and just to the point of the intersecting seams. This one wiggled a little bit and that's because of the thickness of my fabric, but I think I'll still be okay at the end of the day. So let's go on. We'll go down to our bottom block, which again should butt. The seams butt really nicely together. They nest perfectly. Yay. 
It's always good when plans come together. Remember, this isn't a set pattern. So we're sort of flying by the seat of our pants sometimes. So it's just as we're sewing that, that we realize that, oh, we better press the seams in that direction or that direction. This is my bottom unit. I can put this back here, keeping my my last sewing piece to hold my threads. Let's pin match this one again. I have that flying goose. Quarter inch down. Nice and straight. And off we go. Always like to slow down when we're coming to a seam um, intersection like that. So because there, there's so much uh, bulk there. Just cut these, put them back on our board. So now we want to press the seams um, in opposite directions. So um, this one I'm going to want to press out. So these ones I'll press in or the other way around. I don't know that it matters on this time. So these ones I'm going to press towards my goose. So I'm going to have my goose on the top. Nope. The other way? The other way. The other way works better? Yeah, because these points. Oh, we've got a point. Ah, oh, yeah. perfect. Yeah. So here's the really the big intersection. So where our points of our geese come together. So our seams automatically wanting to go in on the inside. So we can press these ones out. I noticed one sitting right here. Oh, my steam's on. I Let's think you were getting lunch. I was getting lunch. We do cheat. You probably figured this out. So uh, Monday morning, when we get here at 10 o'clock, Tiff sews her block. So that way, um, if there's something that I've done wrong on the pattern, we have a little bit of time to fix it. It happened once. We had to adjust the pattern. I had too many squares that we had to cut. And we get to look at some of the seams and stuff before we're live. Okay, so these ones went these ones went out, so this one's going in. So I'm going to press this one with my pinwheel block on top. I'm going to flip it over, press this side with the pinwheel block on top. Sometimes when I'm doing a pinwheel block too, because we've got that really bulk, that's one of the places that I might just give it a little shot of steam just to make sure that it stays nice and flat. Okay, so we have three seams to match. I want to pin match. I like to pin match my seams. Again, the nose of my goose a quarter inch down on our seam allowance. And oops, I'm supposed to use a different pin because my seams are pressed in opposing directions. They nest really nicely. This one's going in the wrong direction, just at the corner. Let's just give that a help.
that seam wants to flip. So I am going to pin the seam that I can't see. So the one on the bottom, I'm pinning in the direction that it's supposed to go, just so it doesn't flip on me, or hopefully doesn't flip on me. I butted this seam together. Let's put our leader in, because I know there's a lot of bulk there. I'm going to sew slowly until it starts. I have a brand new needle in the machine, um, so it's really cool. They do make a big difference, like a new rotary cutting blade. Always wonder why we wait so long. Okay, I made sure my seams were going in the proper direction. I'm just going to take this pin so slowly. I'll line up my edge, so to the next intersection. I'll line up my edge, so slowly. My seam flipped. There we go. I felt it with my fingers. This seam is butted. I forgot to pin that one, but it's butted there now. And off we go. There we go. And Again, the block I'm automatically going to want to press away from our wings, uh, from our um, flying goose. So let's just do that. I'm going to press this seam now. My last row. Quarter inch down, lined up nicely. Seams butted together. Pinning that ball in the bottom seam allowance in the direction that I need it to go. This time I'm going to remember to butt these seams together. And I'm going to butt these seams together. I want to lift my foot and I want to press my block right to my needle. It wasn't catching on my feed dogs. So I want to make sure that it's right to the edge of the needle and then it usually catches. Seems going in the right direction. Even if I think they're lined up, I always take a peek and check and make sure that they're lined up absolutely perfectly. Catch. One last seam to press. Whoops, let's have our leader off. Pressing away from our goose. 
And here's where I like to press it with steam. Now that I have all my seams in my block, I want them to lay nice and flat. So I'm just gonna put my steam on. Again, pressing, I don't wanna iron, I don't wanna stretch them. And there we go. And at this point, I'll grab my 12 and a half inch. We'll test our uh, block to see whether it measures exactly 12 and a half and adjust it now instead of having to adjust it later. So there we have it. There's a uh, block 11. And so Tiffany's block 11. So when she was um, analyzing the colors that she had in her block, she realized that she needed one with a bit more darker background. So she has the white star. So whichever way you choose to do them. Um, there we have it. So we have one more block to go next week. Um, we are going to, it's a little different, this block. Uh, a couple different techniques that we can use. And we are going to be using we are going to be using, again, the folded corner ruler by Doug Lecco, but we will also show you how to make uh, some of the units with some of the rulers that we already have as well. Um, any other questions? Anything? I have any other questions. Okay. So next week is our 12th block, our final block, but you're not going to get rid of me that much or that too soon. So uh, next week is block 12. The week after, we're going to be sewing these blocks together. We're also going to be, um, uh, I'll show you how to trim off the edge. And we, if we have enough time, we're going to talk about borders and how to put the borders on. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about quilting. We might hit that a little bit. And we will come back, though, um, the next week and talk about binding. Because again, it's it's really important. We are not finished when we put the blocks together. We have to put our borders on properly and uh, quilt it and then bind it. Then our quilt is finished. So you're not going to get rid of me too much too soon. Not quite yet. Yes. Awesome. So um, again, don't forget to like and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Tell all your quilting buddies to do the same, and um, we will see you next week. Happy quilting, everyone.